What up guys, BCB here. So as everyone knows, Atari is synonymous with the 2600 and all their game consoles, asteroids, things like that, right? Are you familiar with the Atari digital photo booth? What about the Atari video phone? A round of puppy pong, anyone? Anyway, this episode I'm gonna be talking about Atari oddities. Stay tuned. Welcome back guys, BCB here. So as I said this episode, I'm going to be talking about Atari oddities. Um, I came across an article recently on technologizer.com. The website uh, um, says a smarter take on tech. And I really like this article. This came out Sunday, February 12th, 2012. So this is a good, you know, 10, 11 years ago, right? Uh, I'll put it on the screen here. It's posted by Benj Edwards. Uh, it says here, Atari Oddities, the wacky Atari you don't know. It's digital photo booth, video phone, puppy pong, and more. So I'm going to read this article to you um, and show you the pictures here and talk about these. I want to give credit to Benj Edwards, as I said, who posted this 11-something years ago on this website, technologizer.com. Go check it out. I'll put the links below. So the article says here, uh, 40 years ago this June... Uh, Nolan Bushnell and Ted Dabney founded Atari Inc. in California. And with it, they founded the video game industry as we know it today. Since then, the name Atari has become synonymous with the golden age of video games and a sense of Generation X nostalgia that will never fade. If you're reading this, I suspect you know the Atari 2600, 5200, and 7800 consoles. You played the hit arcade video games, and you may have even used an Atari 8-bit or ST computer. Well, yes, I have. But the story of Atari is filled with many unseen and little-known oddities. Here are 13 examples of weird Atari products and strange Atari marketing. You can use this trivia at your next 1970s or 80s theme party. When you ask, how do you know that? Just tell them Benj Edwards sent you. So the first um, Atari oddity we have is the 1976 Atari digital camera. It says here, Atari's early products from the Nolan Bushnell era often carried a sense of creative exuberance that would later be ironed out by corporate structure. Take the CompuGraph Photo, a 1976 coin-operated amusement. This monstrous computerized photo booth took a subject's photo digitized it, and printed out gag portraits on 11 by 14 tractor feed printer paper. I say gag portraits because the photos came out as ASC2 mosaics, composed of alphanumeric characters automatically arranged by the computer to match light and dark areas of the photo. I'm not sure exactly how they pulled it off, but I do know that it predated TTY Quake by 23 years. Really cool. I love that. Look at those pants. The next uh, oddity we have, and please comment down below if, you, if you've if you heard of these or if you uh, freaked out by these, if you like it, whatever. I want to hear it, guys. So this says Atari Stunt Cycle. In the years following Atari's breakout success with Home Pong 1975, my birth year, actually, um, Atari scrambled to keep ahead of countless clones and competition by bringing out new dedicated home consoles. One of the more interesting units from 1977 incorporated motorcycle hand grips and played a home version of Atari's arcade game, Stunt Cycle. 
Sears released its own version, licensed from Atari, as per tradition at the time, called Telegames Motocross Sports Center 4, seen here, which bundled 20 game variations, including four-player Pong. This looks really cool. Look at got the handlebar here. Um, that's really neat. I love that. And you can kind of see the 2600 influences in that, right? Before it was even released. Really cool. Love that. So the next oddity we have is uh, video music. I love this. And I've seen these um, as well here and there. Um, really cool. Basically a visualizer, right, for music. Um, before, Way before iTunes came out. Uh, it says here, only in the 1970s. Atari Video Music was a 1976 device that generated a dynamic kaleidoscopic light show on your TV based on any audio source plugged into the box. Its designer, Robert Brown, intended it to complement hi-fi components popular at the time so you could listen to and watch, say, Pink Floyd in the comfort of your own living room. If that seems weird, consider that video music came out at a time when Sears devoted a couple pages every year to psychedelic light displays. <laughs> really neat. In practice, the video music wasn't as entertaining as it sounds, I have one, and Atari pulled it after only a year in production. Love that. So it was $169 at the time. That's like $300, $400. Crazy. Um, so here we go on the next one here. And we have um, a pinball machine, the Hercules. It says here, pinball on steroids. You're looking at the world's largest production pinball machine, Atari Hercules from 1979. This 93 inch long, 39 inch wide, and 83 inch high monster was also Atari's last pinball table. Wait a minute, Atari pinball? Yep. Atari did pinball machines beginning in 1976. They never reached the success Atari wanted, especially in the face of booming video game popularity. So Atari shuttered the division in 1979. Another oddity, LeVar Burton played a predecessor of this giant game when it was known as Bigfoot, then a Bally prototype on national TV. Really neat. I heard about this game, I think, in um, Atari 50 maybe, or somewhere. Anyway, look at that huge thing. That's crazy. So, what were they thinking? So, the next thing we have looks like the CTFI, the computer test fixture. It's hard to say. It says here, the great universal Atari machine. In 1976, Atari released one of its most obscure products, the CTFI, computer test fixture. This bulky diagnostic tool spe uh, specifically aided in the troubleshooting and repair of Atari corn coin-operated video games. I totally said corn-operated, didn't I? The CTF served as a universal Atari game machine. A service technician was able to remove any Atari arcade printed circuit board from its original cabinet and play it with the CTFI, which came equipped with dual joysticks, paddles, and everything else needed to test the function of the game. It looks like you're flying a space shuttle there. Wow. Crazy. So the next thing we have is the alternate uh joystick reality here let me read this to you this looks cool if you've ever played the famous atari 2600 game console you are probably familiar with its now iconic joystick what most people don't know is that the joystick could have debuted a 1977 home console version of atari's tank 2 arcade game the tank 2 prototype had a neat feature with joysticks placed in the base unit, a single player could control the left and right treads of the tank with the corresponding joystick. In two-player mode, one could pop out the joysticks for each player to use. With the more versatile 2600 ready for release that same year, the Tank 2 console never made it to the market. Home players ultimately got a taste of Tank when Atari included it as part of Combat, the original packing game for the 2600. Wow, look at that. It looks just like a 2600 except for the other stuff <laughs> around the uh, joysticks. Pretty neat. So next we have the Atari Jukebox. Man, I would freak out if I had this. Look at this. Um, in 1976, France-based Atari Europe launched a line of coin-operated jukeboxes such as the Hit Parade 144, this gaudy model from 1977. 
Information on these machines is scarce, but it is rumored that the European branch of Atari purchased a local jukebox manufacturer and decided to get into the business. It must not have been very successful because Atari Europe exited the jukebox market in 1978, and the machines never made it to the U.S. Man, I would love that. Look at that. That's so amazing. So neat. So next we have the Atari Tell. It says here, Atari Video Phone. Deep in the Warner era of Atari, 1976-84, the company tried products in many strange markets. One of the standout developments of this era has to be the 1983 Atari Tel Luma video phone, which could transmit its still black and white image in about 5.5 seconds over a normal phone line. It had hookups for a printer and a TV so one could see the image on a big screen. Ultimately, none of Atari Tel's products came to market under the Atari brand. Mitsubishi bought the Atari Tel division during restructuring in 1984 and released the Luma as the LumaPhone LU1000 in 1986. That is a cool looking phone. <laughs> it looks like a 2600 to me. So next we have um, the non-video game. Atari made its name as a pioneer video arcade game manufacturer but it didn't limit itself to video technology in the coin-op world. In fact, Atari moved outside its comfort zone with the release of its only electromechanical arcade game, F1, in 1976. This release is slightly odd because electromechanical games were prone to frequent mechanical failure, containing precisely the kind of technology video games were supposed to replace. In this case, however, the projected animated racing action featured in the Namco-designed F1 unit represented a smooth racing experience that video games of the time could not replicate. It wasn't long before video game technology caught up, rendering electromechanical simulation games obsolete only a few years later. Really neat. I love that. Very, very cool. So next we have Puppy Pong. And I first heard about this in Atari 50, actually, that came out recently, the celebration, um, the anniversary celebration. Really cool. It says here, Pong for Kids. In the earliest days of Atari, when Pong was still king, Nolan Bushnell was already thinking about diversification. How could he sell Pong to more and different people? His answer was to package the game in two kid-friendly units called Dr. Pong and Puppy Pong that could be placed in pediatrician waiting rooms to entertain kids. The 1973 units would sell for $795 each and would not contain coin slots. They would be free to play for patients at the office. Atari produced a very limited number of Dr. Pong and Puppy Pong machines that only appeared in on-site testing at doctor's offices and a pizza time theater location. As such, they are very rare and prized Atari artifacts today. Pizza Time, I think, was the other creation of Nolan Bushnell, who created uh, Chuck E. Cheese. I think that was his first name for it, Pizza Time Theater. Correct me if I'm wrong. Really cool. So next, we have Atari Force, and I covered this uh, last week. Since beginning in 1982, Atari began to pack many comic books developed by DC Comics in some of its Atari 2600 game boxes. Each book featured the adventures of a multi-ethnic paramilitary strike team in spandex known as Atari Force. Aside from the name, Atari Force had little to do with video games and wasn't a particularly good read. Instead, it served as a collect-them-all type marketing ploy where kids would have to buy future Atari games to keep reading the story. It morphed into its own full-size comic book in 1984 that lasted 20 issues. Uh, really cool. And it says down here, you can read the entirety of Atari Force Issue 1, which I conveniently narrated over at VCNG back in 2006. Well, I narrated it too, in 2023. <laughs> really cool. I don't think they were badly written. Um, I take offense to that a little bit. or I, Not offense, but I, I would have to object a little bit. I think they're cool. I love the, um, definitely love the lingo about the people of the 80s, you know, that was really cool. Um, I love Dr. Orion. I think he was cool. Um, I love the art. So yeah, I, I don't think they're bad. They definitely could probably be better, but um, I thought it was cool, definitely. So next we have the Atari Calculator. Never heard of this. 
1987, a company called Hartech USA included a fully licensed line of desktop and pocket calculators styled with Atari design and branding. Seen here is a CC192 from my private collection, still unopened in its retail blister pack. Two years later, Atari Corporation canceled the license and announced plans to enter the calculator market directly. Those plans never came to fruition, likely because LCD calculators had become such a cheap commodity by the late 1980s. I definitely want one of those. Love it. <laughs> and lastly, here we have the soul of Atari. The, um, yes. It says here, Atari co-founder Nolan Bushnell led his company with the heart of a showman. Nowhere is this more graphically demonstrated than this in 1976 print ad for a new lineup of Atari coin-op games. In it, Bushnell sits among a whimsical, multi-genre display representative of the company's games, his trademark pipe clenched in a toothy smile. Bushnell's leaps of creativity, sorry, Bushnell's leaps of creative fancy set the playful tone of the video game industry as a whole. In a sense, the soul of Atari and Bushnell's vision lives on in every game we play today. So I just wanted to say, Benj, I freaking love your article. Um, really cool. I love seeing all those products. I never knew about the Atari calculator. I never knew about um, the photo booth. Um, I may have heard of it somewhere, but it's been a while. Um, I never heard of the video phone. Um, really, really cool stuff. Or the vid phone really love to see all that stuff um and i would love a calculator <laughs>. Okay, those things seem pretty strange and all. But have you heard of the Atari Mind Link? World of Home Command name stands for quality. Atari. Starting with a solid base of high value hardware. The Atari 600XL. A top rated contender. The 800XL with even more memory and more power. Proven products, superior to anything in their price range for performance, flexibility, and expandability. With more fully compatible peripherals than any other home computer systems. Atari, high in customer satisfaction, low in retail returns. Atari, taking off. Launching new products that further expand the power of Atari computers and expand your sales opportunities. Peripherals and accessories that make Atari home computers easier to use and easier to sell. The Atari Touch Tablet with Atari Artist software. It opens up whole new vistas in computer creativity. The Atari Light Pen. Used with Atari graphics software, it's a dynamic, new, easy-to-use medium with ever-expanding possibilities. And the Advanced 1050 Disk Drive, the key to hundreds of diskette-based programs for Atari home computers. Atari, exploring new frontiers of technology with innovations that excite consumers and stimulate sales. Get ready for the amazing Atari MindLink. An exciting and unusual new way to operate Atari home computers. It works on the electrical impulses from the muscles in your forehead. The state of the art for the states of your mind. Now, Atari takes you where no home computer has gone before. With new application software for skills and knowledge development. Atari Future Makers. An all new series of space flight simulations with Through the Star Bridge. And this is Ground Control. Unique learning adventures that let you explore the solar system and the planets. For younger learners, we're expanding our line of interactive entertaining skill builders with Letter Tutor, a fun way to learn how to print letters and numbers. And Word Tutor, for reinforcing spelling skills. Skywriter, to build vocabulary skills. And Typo Attack, 
a new expanded version of the best-selling touch typing self-teacher. All new opportunities to take advantage of the main reason people buy home computers. Atari. Committed to educational excellence with high quality programs from Atari Learning Systems. Advanced learning programs that expand the computer's horizons as well as the scholars. Including Atari Lab. And LabMate, the ultimate in experimental science software. Atari Logo, the premier introduction to computer literacy. And new this year, the Learning Phone. Atari software that gives the student access to a world of information from Control Data's Plato database network. Atari Learning Systems. Expanding to serve the needs of the scholar at home or at school. A unique opportunity to break into a growing segment. Atari. Getting down to business with useful, easy-to-learn home management programs. Look for the new Atari Synapse series. Sophisticated programs with the same features as expensive business programs. Now made simple on Atari. SynCount helps keep track of home finances with an electronic spreadsheet. SynFile Plus, an advanced filing and record keeping system. And SynTrend with statistical analysis and graphing capabilities. All designed to work together and all available now, along with a demo diskette that helps your salespeople educate and sell customers. Atari really has a way with words. With Atari Writer, one of the easiest home word processing programs available, now made even more powerful with a new Atari proofreader, an exclusive spelling checker. Atari, capitalizing on consumer trends and backing our home computer line with the largest advertising budget in our history. More than 50 commercials on the Summer Olympics. Memorable advertising from one of America's most credible spokesmen. Atari computers are inexpensive and easy to use. And there are over 2,000 programs you can run on them. Programs that entertain, that teach, and that help you get organized. Atari advertising. Effective. Achieving high consumer awareness. And building sales momentum. Atari's share of market in home computer systems is skyrocketing. We mean business in home computer systems. The challenge is great, and the opportunity is even greater. Atari, taking home computer systems to the outer limits. Walking through my area here, um, got the Atari Link Sun Visor Screen Guard. This fit over the links to... Uh, shade your screen from the sun which at the time it needed it because the original screen was really subpar for this um i have my um mcwill modded links here um and um <clears throat> i have to say I've, I've never used the sun visor for it um in fact i have it unsealed on the box still <laughs> um but yeah kind of interesting uh, another interesting item was the atari touch tablet i've talked about it on my channel before um, this is a really cool tablet that works with the Atari Artist software. I actually um, made a logo in it. If you go back and watch that episode, pretty cool. And the video I played earlier talked about that. And um, lastly, I've got the Joy Board, which was part of the power system by Amiga. I talked about this on my channel before as well. Go watch it. It was pretty funny episode but um yeah i couldn't get this thing to work i'm gonna give it to my friend rick and see if he can maybe look at it but couldn't get it to work so i thought of other uses for it in that episode uh, <laughs> but it was a lot of fun but this is the joy board part of the power uh body control by the power system or part of the power system by amiga anyway go check it out it's pretty cool i think it only worked with one game Now you can play most all the video games you'd ever want to play. Introducing the Sears Cartridge Telegame System. Over 150 video games, all on cartridges. This cartridge of 27 target games is included. But you can get more cartridges that have tank games, space war games, blackjack, speedway. Over 150 video games so far. The Sears Cartridge Telegame System. Sold only at Sears. 
So we all know that Atari has had CDs out over the years, the Tempest 2000 soundtrack, things like that. But did you know they had Atari vinyl records back in the day? So according to Atari Age, um, there are just, um, a couple of different uh, uh, sets of these here. Um, there's the Atari record and book sets, 45 RPM. And um, the complete set here says um, there's an Asteroids record and book, a Missile Command record and book, a Star Raiders record and book, a Super Breakout record and book, and a Yars Revenge record and book. Um, he says here, I'm pretty sure these 45s are also recorded or released in cassette format. There was also Atari Large Format LPs, Asteroids, Missile Command, and Yars Revenge. And uh, he also goes on to say, overall, I wouldn't say they're too valuable as the market was flooded several years ago with plenty of NOS copies, but they are cool collectibles. And this was by Dr. Atari on Atari Age. Anyway, pretty cool. Let me know what you think. Another really odd Atari product I have is Time Lost. This is a little paperback book. Um, Time Lost, a computer adventure by Q. Um, and it's pretty cool. I've talked about this stuff on my channel before. Um, but a uh, really cool story. Um, I really like this book. Um, definitely a cool part of the collection. So we all know that there were some strange Atari products, right? Um, there were also some really strange Atari 2600 games. One of the games I haven't talked about on my channel before is Sneak and Peek. There's a reason why. This game is terrible. Um, so this game here, uh, it says here, was put out by U.S. Games. 1982 and from what I remember that's actually Quaker Oats who put this game out so an oatmeal company put this game out guys shows you kind of what the impending crash looked like right it says here um, from Moby Games it says sneak and peek is a computerized version of the game hide and seek the game is played by two players or one player against the computer one player will close his eyes while the other player hides somewhere after the second player is hidden, the first player needs to locate him in the shortest time possible. After the second player has been located, the roles will then be reversed. The game takes place in an old house with three rooms available, as well as the front yard to hide in. Each of these four locations contains five different places to hide. The game can be played with fixed or variable hiding locations. In the fixed game, the hiding locations will always be found in the same place. And the variable game will move the hiding places around each time a room is entered. Two difficulty levels are available. In the tougher setting, the entrance to the hiding places is narrower, making it tougher to find. So this is a really weird game, you guys. Uh, it's kind of sad there's a hide-and-seek game for the 2600, but there was. <laughs> anyway, let me know what you think about this game. It's definitely terrible. And odd. Let me know, guys, down below what you think about these Atari oddities. I would love to hear it. I also wanted to say thank you so much for watching um, BCB and that Atari show and my other shows. I greatly appreciate it, and I really, really um, savor you guys. You guys are um, amazing. Um, all people watching and subscribers, if you haven't subscribed, please do. Um, I love making this content. Let me know down below if you love this episode. I love doing these random weird episodes, and this was definitely an odd episode, um, and I love it. So, all right, stay cool, get your Java on, and go play some freaking Atari. We'll see you next time, guys. Bye now.